Hello everybody and welcome to Langer's Legion. I'm Langer and let's talk Star Wars Legion. In today's video we're going to recap all of AMG's Star Wars Legion reveals at last weekend's Adepticon. So let's get into it. So if you're watching this video I'm pretty sure you're probably aware that last weekend was the main showdown for Star Wars Legion World Championships at the Adepticon conference or show in Illinois. But additionally, on top of that, AMG always takes this time to run a stream or run a, you know, a session where they provide a roadmap both for near-term and long-term, you know, product releases, features, updates, and so on and so forth. So in this video, I thought I would do a quick, you know, hopefully eight to 10 minute recap of what AMG brought to the table. So I wanna say first off, thank you to the Professional Casual Network and AMG obviously for putting this together and streaming it. That's where these screen grabs came from, as well as I'll put a link to the full stream down below if you wanna watch you know, the Star Wars Legion pieces you know, in their entirety or even Shatterpoint or Marvel Crisis Protocol because AMG did cover basically all three of those properties during this session or this stream. But getting into the Star Wars Legion specific content, they did basically review items that we've already kind of seen that we know are coming, but a little bit more detail. We got some unit cards, we got to see some, you know, upgrade cards and so on and so forth. So we'll start with the range troopers, right? So these were first seen at Mini, Stra Mini Stravaganza back in 2023. So I believe that was like April, May. Um, and we've also seen these minis like on a paint stream and so on and so forth. So not, not a lot of new here. Um, but we did get some clarification uh, two weeks ago in the uh, core rulebook update around a new keyword that will be coming with range troopers. And I'll go ahead and read that here for you. Uh, and the keyword is called advanced targeting. It says when a unit with the advanced targeting trooper one keyword declares an attack against an enemy trooper unit, before measuring range, it may gain one aim token. A unit that uses the advanced targeting keyword may only form one attack pool and skips the declare additional defender step on the attack sequence. So basically this new way to give out a name token, you're not going to be able to split that fire between your core squad and maybe one of the heavy upgrades. But again, getting green tokens is always good. Aim tokens are always good. So just a new way to play this unit um, from a keyword perspective. But we did finally get to see the actual unit card shown here. Um, a lot of things we're kind of wondering about this unit, what came up, would it be, you know, core? Is it going to be special forces or support? Well, it turns out it is going to be support, which I didn't really think it would be. I was thinking more special forces. Um, and as you can see on the card, it is a base cost of 60 points, one health, two courage. Just like most Empire units, it does red saves, uh, two white dice in melee, and one black for range one to one four, uh, range one to four, with no keywords as far as you know. There's no pierce or anything like that. You do have armor one, so that's nice for some of that incoming damage. Indomitable scale and spur. I mean, all those kind of keywords I think play into the th theme or the thematic version of these units that we saw in Solo, you know, Solo movie or Han Solo, the, you know, the Star Wars story, whatever it's called. Um, you can see that you can upgrade one heavy, one additional unit, uh, one equipment, and one comm slots. And we do get to see some of the upgrade cards. We see a heavy upgrade for a DLT 20A, range one to five, impact two, throwing two red dice at a cost of 25, and another heavy upgrade of a T21A, range one to four, but with suppressive and throwing two black, two white with a lower cost coming in. Uh, at 20 points and then we have just the regular add an extra melee to our extra unit uh, mini to the unit for 15 points basically so if you're doing that minus comms and equipment upgrades a full squad is going to come in at around 100 points you know maybe you give them precision scopes or something like that uh, to make better use of those aims so you might be around the 100 110 for a full squad of these next up again it was another unit that we did see teased out at Mini Stravaganza. Uh, that's gonna be available in May, 2024. Uh, 75 points, it is a support unit. Four units, which is interesting, as you'll see there's no extra units or no extra uh, upgrade slots. So you're only gonna equip this as a unit of four. Uh, and again, this is another, comes with another keyword that we did see added to the CRB uh, two weeks ago called Complete the Mission. 
and it says during setup for each friendly unit with the complete the mission keyword, place a friendly priority mission token on the battlefield, not within any deployment zone. While unit with the complete the mission keyword is at range one of a friendly priority mission token, that unit gains surge to block. When a unit with complete the mission keyword attacks an enemy unit at range one of a friendly priority mission token, the attacking unit uh, attack pool gains critical too. So just again, some new mechanics. This is great. I like seeing how AMG is bringing, you know, adding some stuff to the game besides the traditional, you know, take an aim action, do this, do that. Uh, with these keywords, kind of kind of spice things up a little bit. So really put this token somewhere, you know, depending on what your objection uh, objective is, maybe to help with the blocks for defense or obviously do out a little additional attack with that critical two um, if an enemy unit comes within range of that. So I'm thinking, you know, intercept the transmissions or any of those where you kind of know where people are going to be at some point, you can put some defense tech as well as get some additional uh, damage output with that keyword. Uh, looking at the rest of the card, you do see that I have infiltrate, so you could drop them again closer to that that priority checkpoint. Recharge one, target one, and they are shielded. Uh, for melee, they throw two black. Uh, for their range attack, it's range one to two, so again, wanting to probably be close to that mission priority uh, objective token. Uh, they throw one black, one white dice, and it is a suppressive attack, so you hopefully throw out two suppression tokens out there. And they have this keyword called equip and I hope I'm saying this right, Cataran Pattern Armor. Uh, when this unit would be assigned more than one wound from a non-melee attack, you may expend this card and assign this unit one wound instead. So again, some decent, you know, the clones always have really good uh, defensive tech between clone sharing and Adama, all these other things. This is just another added one. So basically you're gonna, the first attack more than likely they're gonna get, you know, no matter how many dice your opponent throws out, they're only gonna take one wound. Um, but it is a use it once and then it goes away type thing. So pretty cool though, again, back to those mechanics I was just talking about. And again, and finally, the last unit we've we've seen teased out multiple times is the Bad Batch. Again, we've seen this at Mini Stravaganza 2023. Uh, core rulebook update has the update for Were No Regs, which says this unit may not spend green tokens on other clone trooper units and other clone trooper units may not spend this unit's green tokens. And the fire support keyword cannot be used with this unit. So if this plays in, in my mind, really well to the thematic sense that the Bad Batch were were rejects. They were not regs, right? So there was always that, if you watched the Bad Batch cartoon or even the Clone Wars cartoon, you kind of knew they were treated as outsiders. So it makes sense that, you know, the other clone troopers wouldn't share their green tokens with them and vice versa. So again, a very cool kind of thematic approach to this unit. And this unit card is laid out pretty interesting, right? I was wondering how they were going to bring this unit to the table with so many uh, named, you know, heroes or special units. And I think they did a great job. As you can see, that's an operative unit. Um, it's at 160 points. And if you look at the unit card, it says it doesn't come with any, but you just have to equip all the members of Bad Batch. So Hunter, Wrecker, Echo, Tech, Crosshair, etc. cetera. Um, you see that they're impervious. Scale, Steady, Sharpshooter 1, again, kind of all the normal kind of clone, I think clone kind of keywords that you see. Uh, they have 2 health, Courage 3. Now what I don't know here, and folks could leave a comment below, is with the 2 health, I'm assuming that's per any, possibly. Um, and the Courage is for the, uh, for the overall unit, because as we, as we get into the upgrade cards, you'll notice there's no like health numbers on these cards. Similar to like if you play Inferno Squad, you know, Del Mico has the little two, so you know he he himself has two wounds that he can take before he's you know he's off the table. But anyways, I digress. You can see that they're speed two, one black in melee, range one to two with one black, one white. And of course, as we mentioned, they do have five heavy upgrades, so one for each member, and you have to equip all members of the unit. Um, and then we got an example of two upgrades. We see the hunter and the crosshair. Uh, the hunter upgrade says you know, an action, free action, choose, or take an action, choose a non-commander or operative enemy trooper unit at range one and in line of sight, roll a black attack dice on a hit or crit, that unit suffers one wound, and it has the leader keyword, which makes perfect sense. And we're talking about Hunter here, the leader of the Bad Batch, or the squad leader for Bad Batch. Then we have the crosshair upgrade, sniper unit, range one to five, one red with high velocity, pierce one and precise one. 
you know, very remnants of, you know, again, like I talked about Del Mico or even some of the sniper units or strike teams across the various factions. And when an attack pool contains only this weapon, it gains critical two, which is pretty cool because now you're going to be able to use, you know, if you roll a surge, you're going to be able to put that surge to use as well. But you notice on the slide, uh, we didn't see Wrecker, we didn't see Tech, we didn't see Echo upgrade cards. So I'm assuming as we get closer to that May, 20, uh, May 2024 date, you know, maybe on uh, AMG's website, we'll see these up, you know, these upgrade cards or start seeing these things teased out a little bit. Um, one thing that was brought up many times that over the over the last year since the bad patch has been announced is like, okay, this is fine to play with uh, Gar, but what about the Rebels, right? And so AMG did take a moment to address this, that if you, this will be a dual faction unit. What we just talked about is more of the Gar side, but you can play this with the Rebels and they'll be played as mercenaries. And if you play them as mercenaries, as you can see on this card, you have to in include Omega, who herself costs 10, one health. She, her weapon is melee to range two. Uh, her, you know, her little laser, you know, bow and arrow or crossbow or whatever you want to call it. And she's throwing two white dice. Uh, you need the, you'll see the counterpart keyword here. So she doesn't need to be included with the bad batch making sense. Uh, and then her new, you know, kind of keyword is I'm part of the squad too. And it says Omega does not, does not have to be assigned wounds or be defeated first due to the counterpart keyword. The Bad Batch may use claim sabotage repair actions when she is in base contact with an objective token as if she was the unit leader. Any claimed objective tokens are still placed in base contact with the Bad Batch's unit leader. So if I'm reading this right, I feel like you're going to be able to kind of use Omega somewhat as a separate unit. So if you know, you're doing stuff where you're doing recover the supplies or sabotage the VAPs or something where we're going to need to use the claim sabotage repair, key repair keyword, she can grab it even if the Bad Batch, you know, wouldn't normally be in range of that, but that uh, objective token will get assigned to the Bad Batch. That's a pretty interesting mechanic if my understanding of that is correct. So again, welcome any comments or feedback down below if folks hear that or hear otherwise or read that indifferently. But that's kind of a cool one as well just to bring different ways of playing units on the tabletop. All right, so that covers stuff that we kind of already knew was coming, just a little bit more details. Uh, now we're actually going to get into some new stuff, right? And these are, the next two items are things that were mentioned, again, at Mini Stravaganza 2023, but it was mostly just like some mock-ups of the actual, you know, squad units or what the, the sculpts would look like. Um, and the first one we have is the Rebel Sleeper Cell Unit. This one is scheduled for Q4 2024. So let's think, you know, holiday season timeline, you know, what's that, probably November, December. Um, they wanted to bring kind of this more thematic stuff that you see from like the Andor TV series and what you see like during the, the Jetta attack in Rogue One of this, these are like rebel sleeper cells, right? Like these kind of hiding in the shadow saboteurs that are gonna attack the you know empire at various stages. Um, and these units are going to lead in or lean into that idea more around sneak attacks and stuff like that, at least as they mentioned on the stream. Now they did not show any unit cards or anything. So how that's going to be addressed yet to be seen. But we did get to see some this cool scope sculpts for these units. We've got some new alien uh, alien races mixed in, which is you know always nice to see. We know the Star Wars universe is is very fast, and it's great to see humanoids or humans. But you know sometimes it's nice to kind of spice things up um, with some aliens, I guess. And the next unit to combat these sleeper cells and can't leave the Empire out. The Empire will be getting the Imperial Riot Control Squads. Again, these play into, if you've watched the Andor series or if you've seen Rogue One with their um, shock batons and, you know, their rally, uh, you know, their riot shields and so forth. Um, so this unit is going to kind of mirror that. So I'm, I'm guessing it'll be very melee focused with these, you know, again, with those batons and shields. But we do see the unit leader here, you know, with his pauldron and as well as a DLT sniper rifle. And you've got these two uh, KX series security droids kind of standing there, which of course have some blaster units. So we'll see how this plays out. A little bit of range, a little bit of melee, or maybe the patons get like a range one. So we'll see how that goes out. But for me, I'm an Empire fan. I got Stormtroopers behind me. I'm always glad to see more Stormtrooper units in the game. Um, so this will, for me, will definitely be a most uh, must add to my Star Wars Legion army. 
And to make sure, you know, that the CIS players aren't left out, we did see uh, better pictures of the upcoming crab droids. Again, these were shown at Mini Stravaganza last year, pick here, but it was more of a mock-up kind of in this, you know, gray, you know, plastic mold look. And these ones you can see here a little bit more bright, a little bit more in color. Um, so CIS players, you are not left out. The crab droids are coming. Then next up was a next reveal and something I honestly didn't have on my bingo card. And that was this Outer Rim Battles terrain pack. And this is going to be coming in the first part of 2025. So we're, you know, we're a ways out for this. Um, while I'm always up for new terrain, you know, especially when you're building tables and stuff like that. Um, one thing about AMG is their terrain is usually pretty spendy for what you get, right? So you think about the uh, X, you know, the downed X-Wing, the downed ATST, the indoor bunker. You know, I believe all those range between 50 up to like $100. If I remember, I think the X-Wing was like $90 and the ATST and the bunker were like, I think in that $45 to $55 range, um, which is cool. But that's, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of other options for terrain, 3D printed terrain and so on and so forth. But usually with those terrain pieces, we also got these like scenario cards for you know, smaller little missions or whatnot. None of that was mentioned here with this terrain pack. It's just mentioned as, you know, terrain that's going to be, you know, moved around. You can move these walls and so on and so forth. So I will really hold judgment on kind of what I think about this till I see the price. If it comes in at $25, $30, you know, I'll probably still pick it up. That seems a little steep. Um, but if it hits that $50 mark, um, I don't know. I'll probably just, I'll probably take a hard pass on that. But, you know, time will tell or 2025 will tell us on how that one's going to look out. Moving along, you know, back to the Clanker players, uh, we're going to see the Aqua Droids coming in Q1 of 2025 for CIS. And if you're not familiar with these units, you know, maybe you only stick with like the main movies, you know, for Star Wars. These come from, for at least for what I know of them, is from the Star Wars Clone Wars animated series. Um, you know, these are kind of like the, the underwater versions of B2 units, quite honestly. And when on the stream, they talk about that these are going to be large units. Like they talked about when they first saw the sculpts, they thought the the printed sculpts that the, the designer might have made a mistake because of just how big. And I believe they used the word chunky in size that these units are. But true to the cartoon, these were big units. Like if you go look at, um, you know, a Star Wars wiki page or whatever, I believe they were like eight to nine feet tall. So they are going to be bigger units. Uh, they even mentioned that they are even larger than the Dark Trooper uh, units right now and from the image you can also see they are sitting on notched bases right so usually notch base units seem to be a little bit larger right i think of the tauntauns uh, i think of you know speeder bikes now maybe they're not big but you know they're just from a from a scale and how they stand up size um so i'm really interested to see how these turn out i'm not a cis player but um it'll be interesting to see what keywords they bring with these how they play i'm guessing it's probably going to be a support class again from that size and you know, quote unquote chunkiness, but again, time will tell and, you know, 2025 will bring some interesting units for the CIS. Uh, next up, we've got what's called the ARF Clone Troopers and ARF Trooper Jedi Attachment. Uh, again, this wasn't, might not be something a lot of folks are familiar with. Again, this comes from the animated uh, TV series as well as the Clone Wars movie, but ARF stands for Advanced Recon Force, and ARF Troopers were normally paired you know, in the, in the cartoon and so on with a Jedi general for kind of these short range reconnaissance missions, right? So they kind of come in pairs, like you had our trooper and they usually had a Jedi with them kind of, you know, obviously doing out the command. So that's where these come from. And again, just like the, sh um, the rebel cell, as well as the Imperial, um, riot, you know, patrol pack. I think these are really great. Like they're pulling outside influence. They're going beyond just the movies. Um, getting some stuff that's specific from the Clone Wars or from TV shows like you know, Andor, again, example, which I'm a huge fan of. I thought it was a great show. But anyways, so the ARF Troopers uh, will come as a unit and then you'll have these Jedi attachment units, which I'm assuming are just going to either be an upgrade into the ARF Trooper units that they didn't or Clone Troopers. They didn't really mention that mechanic on how that's going to work. Um, but the, the key thing here, though, is... This is going to let AMG bring more quote unquote unnamed Jedis, at least into the Gar faction, right? We know during the Grand Republic, there was obviously lots of Jedis. Not all of them can be referenced by name or can always be operative or commander. So this is a great way, I think, 
for AMG to bring these in. Maybe they're not as potentially as strong as a full hero Jedi unit, but it's going to give the Gar faction some other units to play with, and as well as these kind of clone trooper units, again, that are just kind of going to look like truthful to what their content was. Finally, and again, this was something that was touched on in many Stravaganza 2023, AMG is going back into the catalog and going to be reissuing, redoing sculpts of some of the soft pl plastic units, right? So we saw uh, redos of Stormtroopers, uh, as well as Luke, uh, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker back in mini Stravaganza. That, can, that idea is going to continue forward in the summer of 2025, where they're going to release a new Obi-Wan Kenobi for Gar. And of course, you can't have Obi-Wan Kenobi without, you know, I don't know if I'd say his arch nemesis, but a nemesis of his, and General Grievous. So those are going to be two new sculpts that are coming out, all in hard plastic, different poses. Um, this Obi-Wan looks great. It looks very uh, Ewan McGregor-like, which is awesome. Um, and Grievous, just like before, will have a few different poses, right? So you can give him a lightsaber with his pistol or give him the whole, you know, four lightsaber twirling thing like you did before. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, this last image is something that AMG put up where it basically is a timeline of everything that I just talked about. It's a little bit more locked in. So maybe you start at the beginning and you skip to the end. Either way, you can kind of see on one slide kind of the release schedule for these new units and what's coming up. But with that said, let me know your thoughts. Do you like these new releases? Do you like what's coming up? Are you a fan of the re-release of, of, these, of these units in hard plastic? I know I am. But leave a comment below. And until the next video, hail to the Empire.